It's uh, really starting to rain here. I may bail out, but we'll give it a few more minutes and see what happens. Anyway, um, today I'd like to speak to you on a completely different subject than what I've been doing lately, which is repentance and our nation and uh, things like that. And I'd like to speak to you about Christian forgiveness. Some time ago, I did a uh, post on Facebook uh, about forgiveness, and boy, it was I got more animosity and more uh, unchristian-like character from this one post than I've gotten from any other, I believe. And uh, it's because the Bible is very clear on forgiveness. You must repent in order to be forgiven. And I just wanted to clarify some things. And some people taking things out of context really went ballistic. So here we go. I'll read you the text verse for the day. This is Matthew 6, 14 and 15. But if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, your Father will not forgive their sins. Taking that verse as a standalone or all of the other cliche verses that people pull out of context, they say that you must forgive people. Under, uh, it's unconditional and you must forgive people. You can't withhold forgiveness and that is unbiblical. The Bible never says that. It never says that you must forgive without repentance. In fact, you can't forgive without repentance. In order to forgive somebody, they have to know that they need to be forgiven and ask for it. If they don't know that, then you're not forgiving anything. So please follow along with the logic I give and uh, we'll see how this goes. Taking the last verse, the text verse that I just read in context, it says, forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. That's from the Lord's prayer. Jesus said, forgive us our debts as we have forgiven our debtors, okay? We are asking him to forgive our debts and our debtors come to us and ask to forgive, be forgiven and we forgive them. We are not required to forgive unconditionally. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is because a lot of people carry this burden around in them. I've got to forgive, I've got to forgive, and if I don't, I'm not a good Christian. And people point at them and say, you must forgive or you're gonna, you know, you, you're uh, violating God's standards. That is untrue. We are not required to give unless somebody comes and repents to us. So uh, once again, follow along, here we go. Forgiveness is mentioned over 100 times in the Bible. I think it's 116 specifically using the word forgive. But anyway, it's over 100 times. A pharaoh asked for forgiveness. Now forgive my sin once more and pray to the Lord your God to take this deadly plague away from me. This is when locusts had descended on Egypt. He'd already had all these other plagues come on him. And he says, you know, forgive me. I was wrong. Please take him away. And it says, Moses then left Pharaoh and prayed to the Lord. And the Lord changed the wind to a very strong west wind, which caught up the locusts and uh, carried them into the Red Sea. There you go. He asked for forgiveness. The Lord, being gracious and abundant and merciful, did forgive them. Later, they didn't humble their hearts again. And God, uh, obviously, we know the story, killed the firstborn of each uh, uh, family. And uh, the Israelites were allowed to leave Egypt, but at the expense of people's lives. The sacrificial system in Israel, the entire sacrificial system is based on forgiveness. Somebody says, I've done wrong, I sacrifice an animal in uh, exchange for my wrongdoing and God would hear and forgive. Now, there are exceptions when people would sacrifice and God wouldn't forgive. Or when they wouldn't come to him without a sacrifice, then of course they're not going to forgive because they haven't come asking for forgiveness. But we'll get into these one at a time. Here's uh, from the book of Numbers. But if just one person sins unintentionally, he must bring a year old female goat for a sin offering. The priest is to make atonement before the Lord for the one who erred uh, by sinning unintentionally. And when atonement has been made for him, he will be forgiven. Atonement must be made. He asks for forgiveness through the sacrifice and then he is forgiven. One and the same law applies to everyone who sins unintentionally, whether he is a native-born Israelite or an alien. But anyone who sins defiantly, whether native-born or alien, blasphemies the Lord. And that person must be cut off from his people because he has despised the Lord's word and broken his commands. That person must surely be cut off. His guilt remains on him. Understand that being cut off from his people means being executed. He's to be stoned to death or whatever uh, they do to him, but he is his guilt remains on him. He is unforgiven because he has sinned intentionally with a high hand against God. This is what happened to Israel's first king, uh, King Saul. Later, King David did something that we think is much worse than Saul, but he had a repentant heart and he was forgiven. Repentance 
precedes forgiveness. You know, I was listening to a guy yesterday, which is what made me think of doing the sermon today. He's a pastor on the radio and he's talking about forgiveness and, oh, I got to forgive and I got to forgive. And I went through all this trial and emotion and I read all these books on forgiveness and blah, 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 blah. People need to understand you repent, you can be forgiven. If you don't repent, you are not forgiven. The Bible is absolutely clear on this and it is an upsetting thing for people to take verses out of context and to say you must forgive because of blah 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 without looking at the preceding or the following verses which clearly indicate repentance. You will not find a biblical example of forgiveness without repentance. Not one. The very next verse where uh, we just had where God was saying uh, uh, intentional uh, lawbreaker is not forgiven his guilt remains on him and the next verse as an example it says then the Lord said to Moses the man must die the whole assembly mu must stone him outside the camp so the assembly took him outside the camp and stoned him to death as the Lord commanded Moses this was a person that violated the Sabbath I imagine that he was on his knees saying, oh, you know, whatever, I, I can go out and I can pick up this wood and do all these things. And he had an unrepentant heart in doing it. And he was taken out and he was stoned because he did it with a high hand against the Lord. He blasphemed the Lord in the Lord's Sabbath and therefore he was stoned as a Sabbath breaker. From the book of Hebrews, it says, For if we sin willfully, after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation, which will devour the adversaries. We have been offered forgiveness through Jesus Christ. If we refuse that offer of forgiveness, we expect fiery indignation from the Lord. That couldn't be any clearer. That is after the crucifixion. People are always trying to say, well, Jesus, you know, he did something different and the Old Testament doesn't apply. Absolutely not. He fulfilled the Old Testament. I did not come to abolish the law. I came to fulfill it. All of those Old Testament sacrifices pointed to his sacrifice. There is not universal atonement and there is not universal forgiveness. The Lord replied, I have forgiven them as you asked. Nevertheless, as surely as I live and as surely as the glory of the Lord fills the whole earth, not one of the men who saw my glory and the miraculous signs I performed in Egypt and in the desert, but who disobeyed me and tested me ten times, not one of them will ever see the land I promised on oath to their forefathers. No one, who's, no one who has treated me with contempt will ever see it. This is when Moses asked for forgiveness for the congregation of Israel for turning their back on him and saying, you know, we, don't, we want to go back to Egypt and we don't want to believe these uh, uh, spies that went in and saw the, the, uh, uh, the Holy Land and they gave a bad report that people wanted to believe them rather than the two spies that disagreed and said, yeah, we can go in and do it. Anyway, it's a nice story. Read it from the book of Numbers. But God did not forgive the people that high-handedly rejected him and asked to turn back to Egypt. Not one of them except Caleb and Joshua entered the promised land because they were faithful to God. But Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after he is done good for you. All right, once again, Joshua understood if you don't repent, you are not forgiven. He will destroy you in your sin. For I told him that I would judge his family forever because of the sin he knew about. This is God speaking to Samuel about the high priest of Israel, Eli, whose sons were doing inappropriate things. Eli didn't restrain them. He allowed them to continue to do these wicked things. And God says that he would not forgive them. He goes on, if you forsake the Lord and, oh, I'm sorry. Therefore, I swore to the house of Eli, the guilt of Eli's house will never be atoned for by sacrifice or offering never atoned for. That means there is no forgiveness for the house of Eli because of what they did. They died in their sins. When anyone sins against his neighbor and is forced to take an oath and comes and takes an oath before your altar in this temple, then hear in heaven and act and judge your servants condemning the wicked, bringing on his, his way on his head and justifying the righteous by giving him according to his righteousness. This is at the dedication of Solomon's temple. And again and again and again and again, Solomon brings up repentance, please forgive. Repentance, please forgive. Repentance, please forgive. There is never a time that he says forgive without repenting. It's not recorded there. It's not recorded anywhere in the Bible. You are not required to unconditionally forgive. We'll get to more verses that you will say that's not true. And here's a verse. I'm going to cover them. So just wait a minute.